Today we're going all the way back to 7th century China with Tang Garden, where the hot new emperor on the block, Xuanzong, has decided to create some grand imperial garden. You and your friends will be taking the role of garden engineers, like, I don't know, like Alan Titchmarsh, to try and build the greatest garden the emperor has ever seen, and to truly highlight the golden age of China. Last person to have been to imperial dynastic China goes first. So, before we begin, it's worth mentioning that Tang Garden is a Kickstarter game, but thankfully the general actual base game is completely unaffected by this. Instead, all the Kickstarter bits and pieces came in a bunch of side boxes. And I'm not going to be looking at any of these, so don't worry about any of that. So, Tang Garden is this incredibly colourful and bright and vibrant tile placement and set collecting game that will see you and your friends build up this wonderful garden as you spread out across the board, but also upwards because you'll be placing a number of trees and structures and pavilions and bridges and these wonderful landscapes that all just bring your garden to life. But for whom doth the garden toll? Oh. On your turn, you'll be able to pick up and place a tile from one of four piles representing the four basic elements. Earth, grass, water, and wild. Uh, when you do pick up one of these tiles to place down, you have to naturally try and make sure that the, the edges all line up nice and neatly with your with what's already on the board, and if you do, then you get a little element on your little engineer board. As you go around placing these tiles down, you might remove one of these little landscape tokens, which allow you to put down one of the small or large landscapes around the edge of the board. Oh, it's beginning to look quite nice already, isn't it? Because we've got these wonderfully colorful tiles that have expanded our garden outwards, framed by this ever-expanding and kind of beautiful landscape tiles. Ugh. But what if we were to add more? You see, also on your turn, you can, you can draw decorations from the decoration deck, and these allow you to put down the things like trees, or the pavilions and bridges, or, or flowers and fish and animals and birds, and it's all just builds up to be so deliciously gorgeous. The board begins to just explode with colour and it oozes in style as you place down yet another brightly coloured tree or put down just a tiny little little bird token. Oh, it's beautiful. But why? Why are you going to the lengths of building this immaculate garden? Well, other than the fact that the Emperor asked you to. Well, that is where the visitors come in, because you see, as you build up your little engineer board with all the little elements and stuff, you can eventually go to the person market and grab yourself a visitor. Each one has their own unique wants and preferences for what their peep is peep. So you're trying to specifically grab individual people that you want and, you know, build a landscape that they want to see and hopefully let them see it. But what visitors can you wrangle into your fine garden? Well, I'm glad you asked. You have the Emperor himself! He loves looking at dragons because he knows that one day rising levels of pollution will see these big lizards go extinct. The Merchant! The Merchant enjoys the visage of villages on the horizon, reminded constantly that capitalism will one day destroy them. Or the Empress! She goes about the garden trying to keep a watchful eye on the Emperor or the Lady. <laughs> oh, but don't let her spot them together, as she'll want a word with your manager. You'll score a number of points, or coins in this scenario, uh, depending on like how well someone's view, like preference, is achieved, as well as every individual decoration that is also in their line of sight, and it's just a straight line, not a horrible cone. Which just means that as you'll be building up this garden, you're trying to put down all these lovely pieces in front of people, and when it gets to actually scoring the game, as you go through each player and each character, it becomes this wonderful reflective period as you, you know, re look at everything that you have combined and built, and just kind of like go, ah, we made this, it looks nice. 
And that is pretty much Tang Garden, sort of. Before I delve deeper into this garden, I realised I've not actually explained what a garden is. Some of you may remember of gardens from before the event, but for those of you who don't, don't worry, I've got you back. What's up? It's me, Cool Chris. Cool Chris. And I'm here to tell you all about gardens. You see, gardens are a subset of outside spaces that are predominantly owned by, well, the very rich who can afford homes. They tend to be an area filled with greenery and plants and allow the owner to express themselves through their own horticultural nature. Although, obviously, you or I can only ever dream of such an experience because who can afford a garden? So, Tang Garden has you and your friends sort of cooperatively and competitively trying to build this incredible garden as you're all putting bits and pieces down, trying to put the best bits in yourself to get the most points slash money. But here's the thing, from my plays of the game, everything seems somewhat limited. Tang Garden describes itself as a sort of Zen garden builder game. And it achieves that basically perfectly. However, what it means that this doesn't actually achieve is, well, any real sense of an actual game. What I mean here is that, like, the game is very simple. Almost too simple. Because it is just ultimately placing tiles down and you're not really ever making any sort of grand strategy moves. There is never a tension around the table of trying to work out, ooh, what... What, what, what are they trying to do? What's Chris trying to do over there? Oh, is he trying to steal something from me? Because ultimately, you're just placing tiles down. Realistically, the most complex a move could possibly really be is placing landscape tiles in a place where your friends don't want them to be. Ah, your emperor wants to look at dragons, does he? That's a shame, because it seems like all the dragons are behind him. <laughs> There is also a, well, surprising amount of luck involved. See, luck isn't necessarily bad, but it can be frustrating. Because you could draw a bunch of cards from the decorations deck and be like, oh cool, it's, it's, it's just bridges and pavilions. And well, there's nowhere on the board to place them, so <laughs> congratulations, you've wasted your turn. But, you know, maybe if you keep drawing tiles, you'll eventually maybe get one that allows you to have a pavilion space on it? No? Because of how light Tang Garden is as a game, it can be this sort of semi-meditative experience. Like, imagine, you and your friends have all come back from work, it's the evening, you're all really tired from a hard day's grind, and you've got Tang Garden. You don't really need to think that much, you're just kind of placing nice colourful tiles around, you've got trashy TV on in the background, <sighs> and you're just collectively building this beautiful tapestry of a garden together, all while quietly, slowly enjoying each other's experience. Because you're not having to think about high-level strategies, you're just placing down tiles, making things colourful. But then we do end up tripping face first into a koi pond over one of the biggest flaws in the game. The iconography. I didn't mention this earlier, but each little visitor that you can get also has a like passive ability that they can have and act on whenever like you hold on to them, because you hold two of them. But do you know what any of these symbols mean? No, of course you don't. The frequency with which you'll be looking at the back of the manual to double check what these arcane symbols on the monk mean is plentiful. What does this ability do again? Is this symbol the same as this symbol? How does scoring fish work again? Some form of like player reference card would have probably made this whole experience a lot easier because ultimately there are too many unique symbols floating around on the board to reasonably keep on top of which just means that the whole experience can be a flip-flop between enjoying just how nice everything looks and putting down such colourful pieces and watching this garden come alive 
and then crippling perplexion as you have to try and work out what the officer does again, and maybe you, instead of looking up his unique passive skill, we'll, we'll just put him on the board, and that way we don't actually have to worry that much, and we'll work it out later. Then we also move on to what is essentially a personal bugbear of mine. You see, you'll be building up this beautiful, like, vibrant garden filled with bits and pieces, and it looks wonderful, and sure, you'll be having to lift stuff up to see what's underneath them all the time, which is bad, but it's still really bright and colourful. Until you look at the actual people themselves and they're awful. On a board filled with this much colour, these plastic models stick out like sore thumbs in a line of non-sore thumbs. It's kind of upsetting and when you look at these like soulless gall of faces that each person has and compare it to like the incredibly beautiful artwork on the cards. It could just be that these miniatures are just, I don't know, a bit too miniature. So a lot of the detail is lost, so their faces just dissolve into nothingness. And you ultimately end up just having to rely on, like, the little coloured ring on the base in order to identify which one is which. Also, a bunch of them have very similar coloured bases. It's a case of, realistically, I personally feel like if you just had little standees with this card art in your garden, everything would look a lot nicer. It would just blend in and flow so much nicer. Now, you see, I quite like Tan Garden. Sort of. Maybe. Not really, but it is this wonderful box of colourful toys that when you just bring it to the table, people gather around. It looks really nice. But it also doesn't really do anything other than you creating a nice garden with your friends. Like, it just doesn't have that much of a game aspect beyond, you know, just very light tile placement bits and pieces. It looks really nice, but like, you have to ask, why would I get this and not other tile placement games, such as like, Carcassonne, or, or maybe... Carcassonne. These are my two sons. My Carca Carcassonne sons. Carcassonne has significantly fewer rules and has those tight fights as you're trying to steal cities from one another or steal farms from one another and everyone tends to know what they're doing very very quickly. It is also half the price of Tang Garden but Tang Garden looks really, really nice. I have a friend who is not that into board games and they are very excited to play Tang Garden again because they just enjoyed like interacting with him, putting down all the little trees. I can't remember the last time I managed to convince anyone to play Carcassonne because it looks like Carcassonne. So I feel like my final thoughts on Tang Garden simply boil down to a simple question. Are you comfortable in getting a game that is incredibly light and there's arguably not much going on, but might bring a bunch of your friends down to the board game table because of just how nice it looks? Because it doesn't look like a web page from the early 90s. Because ultimately, you may just be buying this game for, well, the nice pieces and all the bits of card and, and just because it looks nice. Tang Garden could be very easily your curio introductory board game, right? Like, it looks really nice and it seems so approachable. Other than, obviously, the terrible iconography and kind of ugly statues, but otherwise, it's such a nice and simple game, quite pleasant to play, that it could be that intro introductory board game for a number of your friends. So while I can't recommend Tang Garden or sing it that many praises, I can say that some of my friends sat down at the board game table because of this and they kind of want to return because of it. And I feel like that's at least something. It clearly has a spot, but also there may just be better games to do such a thing. Hello again, it's me, Cool Chris. Cool Chris. If you enjoyed this video, why don't you let me know in the comments section or with a like or maybe even subscribe for more videos about board games and video games and, and just games in general. 
Uh, I said this was like a sort of good introductory board game, but I think there's a better one, which would be Mechs vs Minions, which I've done a review on, uh, which is also kind of like really nice to hand feely with. Or if you want something else that's really bright and colourful, you've got Dinosaur Island, which is right here. Hooray! Videos by me about board games. Otherwise, you can click on my face where there is a face orb to subscribe or something like that. Anyway, thank you and goodbye.